Uh, this is a sample from page 74. It's called Master Plan and First UK Trip. Chewing the cud. That's what a cow does when it eats grass. It chews half-digested food, jaws munching away at regurgitated grass and staring into space, ruminating. It will be fascinating to think that glassy, faraway look in its eyes hides a deep intelligence reflecting on itself and cowmanity's place in the universe. But in reality, it's more likely that though it looks like the lights are on, nobody is home. Jethro chewed his cud. Whereas once his teaching horizons had been vaguely bright and sunny, like new doors to open onto new worlds, now a grey cloud hung over that horizon, or glimpses of it were hidden in a nasty clinging fog. It felt that there was nothing new to discover in teaching. True, it could have been a hangover from the bad experience of working at St. Jude's and the private company BLS before that that was affecting his thinking, but at the same time he had to admit that maybe teaching was getting him down. Was it teaching, or was it working for French people trapped in the rigid systems they were part of? Was this how his working life was going to be for the next few years? Despite passing 58 that summer, he saw no time in the future when he wouldn't be working. He imagined himself continuing to teach until his hair got grey and fell out. Not too far away. How could one retire from life? It felt to him like teaching was going to go on forever. One bad experience after another where his own ideals clashed consistently with employers who didn't care about his ideals but only about profit. What else could he do? He'd know practical or manual skills such as carpentry or plumbing. Jethro permitted himself the worrying luxury of entertaining the idea of giving up on France completely and returning to the UK. But the UK of 2021 was not the same UK he'd left in 2006. He thought of it as worrying in the sense that once he'd committed to debating it, one deciding vote might just tip him over the edge. It was like tempting fate. In 2006, he made a healthy living with workshops and theatre in primary and secondary schools in England. But the Tories' Liberals had shot that down after the general election of 2010. Though it was true he was still dependent on the French state of top-ups to his irregular and low-income jobs, he was treated with dignity by those who administered the top-ups, and wasn't humiliated once a fortnight, standing like a beggar in a queue, having to doff his cap and say, yes sir, no sir, to spotty Herberts, 30 years younger than him, eager to impress their supervisors at the expense of the dignity of men and women, like Jethro, many years older. Brexit Britain was already having an impact on the cost of living in the UK, as imports became more expensive, and despite all the many contradictions, there was still a royal family, still an unelected House of Lords, and still a state mouthpiece in the form of the BBC. And the weather was still unreliable. The very idea of it going back filled him with a sense of defeat, almost as if the last 15 years had not happened, that it had all been just a long but temporary working holiday, and the streets of his imagination would soon be lined with smirking underachievers who never left their hometowns, mocking with wagging fingers, we told you so, we knew you'd be back, these momentary temporary trips into his imagination were unnerving because it was almost as if like a poor swimmer venturing into the deep end of a swimming pool with only a rubber inflatable ring for security. He could entertain the idea of fully inhabiting that old life, but with the security of the rubber ring could, if the fear was too great, kick out and paddle back again to the safety of the life he knew. To truly understand or feel something, he had to inhabit that mind and it was a disturbing challenge. It reminded him of a storyline he'd once seen on TV as a child in a series called Colditz about POWs in World War II. Prisoners were always looking for crafty ways to escape. There were traditional methods like digging tunnels, being smuggled out in laundry baskets or even building a homemade glider. But there was also another riskier way and that was to feign insanity. Insane prisoners were sent to neutral Switzerland. The storyline which forever stuck in his head was about a prisoner who pretended to be mad and started doing odd and bizarre things to convince his captors that he was insane and needed to be sent to Switzerland, where, once there, he'd of course become normal again. The tragedy of this particular story was that he convinced his captors of his madness, and they did indeed send him to Switzerland. But once there, he was unable to snap out of the role he created for himself and went insane. He'd risked dabbling with madness, and madness had won. He spent the rest of his life in insane, insane asylums. 
Not that Jethro was envisaging life in Brexit Britain as an insane asylum, insane asylum, and he is a patient, but the memory of that storyline was as a warning as to what happened when gambling with risky ventures. If he returned to live in England, would he ever be able to leave again? Key to the door. Next. <laughs>